UTXOs or unspent transaction output are the technical underpinning of the Bitcoin network. It is crucial that anybody who takes Bitcoin into self-custody has a basic understanding of UTXOs, what they are, why they are important, and how to manage them. A lack of understanding can cause major issues down the road. Here's everything you need to know about UTXOs in under 10 minutes. First, we all know that Bitcoin enters circulation through Bitcoin mining. Miners that mine a new block are able to add a transaction that sends them a certain amount of newly created Bitcoin in accordance with the halving supply schedule. To illustrate this, here's our miner. Let's call him Chad. Chad just mined a Bitcoin block and received the 6.25 BTC block subsidy plus one BTC worth of transaction fees. So Chad just received 7.25 BTC in total. This is Chad's UTXO. A UTXO is simply a chunk of Bitcoin. Now, each Bitcoin transaction contains inputs and outputs. Let's imagine that Chad wants to pay Bob 5 BTC. And let's assume that this 7.25 is the only Bitcoin that Chad has. The way the network processes this transaction is it's going to take that UTXO of 7.25, that's the input, and it's gonna break it off into three new UTXOs, the outputs. Bob will receive a UTXO of five Bitcoin. The miner that processed this transaction earns a fee for doing so. And to keep the math simple, let's say the fee for this transaction was 0.01 Bitcoin. So an output of 0.01 Bitcoin is created to send to the miner. The transaction fees earned by miners is variable. Keep that in mind because we're gonna circle back as this is the key idea of the video. Lastly, Chad will receive a UTXO of the remaining 2.24 BTC. This process of inputs and outputs is similar to spending physical cash. If you purchase a good that costs $50 and you use a $100 bill, you don't rip the bill in half. You hand over the $100 and receive a $50 bill as change. Similarly, in your physical wallet, you can have $100 and that $100 can be a single $100 bill or it can be a combination of smaller bills such as 10s, 20s, 50s, etc. Let's go back to our example of Chad and Bob. Bob now has a five Bitcoin UTXO that he received from Chad. And let's imagine that Bob runs a consulting business and he charges five Bitcoin for his services. So on top of this five Bitcoin UTXO he got from Chad, he has nine other five Bitcoin UTXOs that he got from other clients. So his total Bitcoin balance in what is displayed in his wallet software is 50 Bitcoin. Now let's say Bob wants to use some of that Bitcoin to buy a house from Joe that costs 27 Bitcoin. The network doesn't subtract 27 from 50 in order to process this. It selects enough UTXOs as inputs in order to send the 27 Bitcoin. Six of these five Bitcoin UTXOs equaling 30 Bitcoin are used as inputs for the transaction. Through these six inputs, three outputs are created. Joe gets a UTXO of 27 Bitcoin. The miner that processed the transaction receives a transaction fee of, let's say, 0.06 BTC. Lastly, 2.94 BTC remain from the 30 BTC that were used as inputs. So that 2.94 is sent back to Chad in the form of a fresh UTXO. As you'll notice, the transaction fee was higher for this transaction than it was for Bob's transaction to Chad. This is not because Bob sent 30 Bitcoin compared to Chad sending just five. This is because Bob's transaction used six UTXOs as inputs, while Chad's transaction only used one UTXO as an input. There is a limited amount of data that can be included in each Bitcoin block. The more UTXOs used in a transaction, the more data that transaction will take up. Transaction fees are paid according to the size of the transaction in terms of data, not the size in terms of how much Bitcoin is being sent. This is why it's possible to send hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin in a transaction and not pay exponentially more in fees than someone sending a few dollars worth of Bitcoin. In fact, you could end up paying less depending on the number of inputs. Transaction fees are measured in sats per V-byte or Satoshi's per virtual byte. Due to the limited space within each block, transaction fees function similar to the bidding process in an auction. Miners are able to choose which transactions they want to include in the blocks that they mine. And of course, they're gonna choose the transactions with the highest fee rate, paying the most sats per V-byte. When demand for transactions is high, users have to outbid each other's fee rate in order to incentivize miners to include their transactions over someone else's. And this is where proper UTXO management is a big deal. If you've been doing the right thing, dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and taking self-custody, you likely have dozens or even hundreds of UTXOs. In the future, if you ever want to send a sizable chunk of Bitcoin on the network, your transaction is gonna have many inputs. 
And considering the future economics of the Bitcoin network is built on purely a transaction fee-based revenue model for Bitcoin miners, this can be a huge problem if you don't do something about it now while transaction fees are relatively low. You can avoid this headache by doing a UTXO consolidation. This simply means you're sending Bitcoin to yourself to an address that you control in order to turn many inputs into a single output. This way, when fees are high in the future, you'll have a larger UTXO, meaning fewer inputs for your transaction, which means a smaller transaction in terms of data, which means you pay a lower transaction fee. There's another aspect to consider when it comes to UTXO management, and that's privacy. When you send Bitcoin to someone else, they can look on chain and see the input used in that transaction. If Bob uses a 100 Bitcoin UTXO to send one Bitcoin to Chad, then Chad will know that Bob still has 99 Bitcoin, which is information that Bob may not want others privy to. Something else to consider with privacy is keeping track of your UTXOs and who you received them from. Let's use Bob as an example. Alongside his consulting business in which Bob gets Bitcoin as payment, let's imagine Bob also stacks Bitcoin through two other avenues. He mines Bitcoin through Blockware's hosted mining service, and he also dollar cost averages into Bitcoin through an exchange like Swan, Strike, or Cash App. When Bob is consolidating UTXOs, he should keep separate stashes for each of these three streams. If Bob combines UTXOs he got with Blockware from UTXOs he got from the exchange, then the exchange and Blockware will both be able to see the other coins on chain. In order to minimize the amount of information available to investigative parties, Bob should consolidate the UTXOs from his consulting business, his mining rewards, and his DCA into separate stashes. UTXO management fundamentally boils down to a balance between privacy and fee optimization. Keeping a mixture of large, medium, and small UTXOs is probably the best approach to take. Most exchanges and mining pools have a minimum withdrawal requirement of 100,000 sats in order to prevent you from accumulating tiny UTXOs that are difficult to spend without losing a high percent of their value to transaction fees. To play it safe, you're probably best off not holding on to any UTXOs that are smaller than 1 million sats. And depending on the size of your Bitcoin stash, you may want even larger UTXOs. Now, transaction fees have historically gone through cycles with high fees during bull markets and fees low during bear markets. When fees are high, this incentivizes developers to work on Bitcoin scaling solutions, which when developed can in turn lower transaction fees. We've seen this already with SegWit. However, the current state of the network and layer two, such as Lightning, is not one that is capable of fully servicing the storm of demand set to enter the market during the next bull market. The base layer will be the dominant method of transacting Bitcoin and fees are going to be incredibly high during the coming cycle. It's possible that scaling solutions are developed to keep fees down, but this is not something you should bank on. There's a likely scenario in which small UTXOs are effectively unspendable due to high transaction fees and you don't want to be caught in this predicament. If you're stacking Bitcoin often, make sure you only withdraw into self-custody in increments of 1 million sats or higher, and you should consolidate those into larger chunks somewhat frequently. And again, the ideal UTXO size is different for everyone based on your total Bitcoin stash, as well as your spending habits. Hopefully this video taught you the what and why behind UTXOs. And if you want to learn how to consolidate them properly, then I recommend you check out this video from my friend Wicked Smart Bitcoin.